There are different types of loops in JavaScript. The most common is a for loop. For loops run for a specific amount of times. We begin with the word for. Then within parentheses, we have three items separated by semicolons. The first is the initial expression, then the condition, then the increment expression. After that, we have the code being executed within curly braces. The initialization is only run once to set up the loop variable. Then every time the loop iterates, the condition is evaluated to determine whether the code should be executed or not. Lastly, the final expression is evaluated at the end of each loop iteration and is usually used to increment or decrement the loop counter. Here's an example. We have a blank array called numbers. Then in the for loop, we are creating the variable i and setting it to zero. This will be our loop counter. After the semicolon, we check to see if i is less than five. If the statement is true, the loop will continue. If it is false, the loop will end. Then after the next semicolon, we are incrementing i by one. Plus plus just means add one. Now in our expression code, we are pushing i into our numbers array. After the code executes, the final expression runs incrementing i. So now i is one and we check our condition. Since i is still less than five, we run our code again, incrementing i again and so on. So i will go from zero to one, two, three, four, and then it gets to five. Since i is now equal to 5, the loop stops, and in our console log, we get the array of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. For loops have a break early feature. So if for some reason you want the loop to end early, you can use the break keyword. So here we're doing a secondary check within our code to see if i is greater than 2, and if so, we are ending the loop early. In the console log here, we only get the array of 0, 1, and 2. A common use case for loops is looping through an array to get the values. So here we have an array of numbers and we are looping through it. The for loop is set up very similar except for the condition. Here we are checking to see if i is less than the array.length. So once we have looked at each value in the array, we want the loop to stop. In the console log, we are getting each value. One last example is looping through a multi-dimensional array. To do this, we can use nested loops. The first loop is looping through the first dimension of the array, which includes three levels. The second loop is looping through each of these arrays. So then we console log the array with two indices, and we end up with the numbers in order. One, two, three, four, five, and six. This has been a 90-ish second JavaScript January.